Well, we introduced uh, a transition that was happening here. Uh, now it's been weeks ago with uh, Jason and Ari uh, who have been in, involved in all sort of things around here in leadership. Actually, Jason and Ari both came years ago to a ministry program uh, that was a one-year intensive discipleship program called School of Leadership Development. <coughs> they met each other there, uh, got married. Now they have a, a, a large and continually growing family. But anyway, um, they've been involved in uh, all kind of uh, different leadership, chiefest of which has been with the youth uh, here at the church. And so uh, they came to Paul and I uh, weeks ago now and said, we feel like God's leading us back to, uh, to Washington where Jason is from and uh, his whole family lives there. They're wanting to move back there. And so we announced that transition. Then behind the scenes, we said, well, uh, what about the youth? Uh, what are your thoughts? And we agreed that they'd pray about that and get back to us. And so uh, we met with them. And uh, honestly, I was a little surprised because we had said there's a great team of different people uh, that are uh, working with the youth and, and they have... Um, a track record and, and uh, they have different responsibilities they've been carrying and so what's your thoughts so they talked about a few people but they said uh, we think the best possible scenario is to see if we can get uh, Bailey Bryan to come back from uh, the University of the Nations in Kona, Hawaii and I was a little uh, surprised not because I didn't think he was capable but uh, but he had been gone a while and God had opened up some great doors and I, I just uh, was a little surprised. And so I, the first thing I said is, well, I don't know if we'll get, be able to get Bailey to come back because I had talked to him over there and, and um, he had been, he traveled with the circuit uh, riders and, and uh, was involved in lots of ministries and, and um, had some great opportunities going forward. And uh, so anyway, we talked about it, and then we talked to the pastoral team, uh, which are the pastor emeritus of the church, and we, we have a really strong, a great pastoral team in this church, and I'm really thankful uh, for them. A number of them are uh, here this morning, but uh, we, we have an, an accumulation of, of probably uh, hundreds of years of pastoral experience when we combine uh, the experience of uh, Cheryl and I and uh, Doak and Ed and Isaac and uh, Paul and Danielle and Bill and Kay and, and it goes on and on. Uh, you know, we just have a really, really strong uh, pastoral team. And so we met with them and we talked about all that. And um, we talked about three uh, issues that I just wanted to uh, bring up to you. First of all, we, we talked about uh, Bailey's age. Bailey is young. Uh, for those of us that are my age, that's a really, really good thing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, of course, the Bible guides us in all these things. And so uh, a young man, a very young man and a single man, we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, whose name was Timothy, was chosen by Paul. He said, I have no one that reflects my heart like Timothy. And, uh, and so Paul put him as the senior pastor, the governing elder at one of the greatest churches in uh, New Testament history, and that's the church of Ephesus. And, uh, and he said to him, he said, uh, uh, let no man despise your youth, but you be an example of the believer in word and faith and conduct. And um, so here's a young single guy that, that was a lot like when I came here. I, uh, they used to call me the younger elder, but uh, when I first came here, uh, all the elders I was working with were 10 years or more older than I was. But uh, God had given me uh, an anointing and a grace to do what uh, he wanted me to do here. So uh, we talked about that, and, and the Bible's our guide. We said, well, yeah, he's young. But remember what Paul said about Timothy. You know, last night it was fun for me because, of course, uh, Danielle is... Uh, is mama to, to Bailey, but also Shelly uh, was here, and my Aunt Grace, which uh, I love my Aunt Grace. She's always been 
Um, just uh, really special to me. But I thought about what God's word said about Timothy. And he said, hey, uh, you're young. Everybody knows you're young. So what? You're anointed by God. You're called to be a leader. And you just step to the front and lead. And he said, you've been raised right. And I see in you the faith that I saw in your mother and in your grandmother. And in Bailey's case, and we could say, and in your great-grandmother. Uh, but in any event, we talked about that. And the, uh, of course, uh, from a Bible point of view, the consensus of the team is that that's not a problem. Uh, then what about being single? Well, the simple truth is the entire New Testament is a book about a red-hot singles group that took the world. Uh, it really is. Uh, when you think about it, oh yeah, Jesus, for starters, uh, was single. And I'm sure it's not because there weren't a lot of gals that would have married him. But Jesus was single, and uh, so was the great apostle Paul. Uh, and uh, if you go through the New Testament, it, it's a story of a, a singles group. There's no indication in the Bible, there's not a single indication that someone needs to ever be married uh, uh, to fulfill the call of God on their life or to have wisdom to help other people who are married. And so, uh, again, you know, we, we talked about that and thought, well, uh, that, that's not an issue. Now, the one thing that, uh, that I just wanted to bring up to you because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about it, and um, that's the fact that uh, he's family both to me and, of course, to Paul and Danielle. He's uh, their, their son. And um, so we talked about family issues. Well, uh, when you do that, again, from a Bible point of view, um, th there, there's not an issue with, uh, with what is sometimes called nepotism. And let me explain nepotism for a moment. How many have heard the term nepotism? Okay, most people. Uh, and like any other term, there's a proper way to define it and an improper way. A nepotism comes from the Greek word nepios, uh, which means immature. Uh, it, it means untrained or unskilled uh, in, in anything. So uh, nepotism is when, uh, based on family relationships, you take somebody that is unqualified and put them in authority anyway. Not because they're qualified, not because they have grace, but simply because they share your name. So nepotism, of course, is not a good thing, and companies and churches sometimes suffer from that. But the issue is not about family. The issue is about immaturity and disqualification. Uh, from a biblical point, you realize that um, the priesthood was based exclusively on family. Uh, if you were not directly related to Aaron, you could not be a priest of God. doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. If you weren't a Related to Aaron, it's just, sorry that this is for the sons of Aaron, the family of Aaron. The same was true of the Levites. You, you had to be related directly to Levi in order to serve in the sanctuary. And so, um, of course, we know that everything uh, about the kingdom is about a family. Now, the good news is we are all sons and daughters uh, of our Heavenly Father. And so that's a good thing. But um, the Bible tells us to have no prejudice in these matters. And so uh, prejudice can be for or against somebody. Uh, when I was uh, an elder uh, in Aberdeen, Washington, when it was time to ordain me, uh, and again, Ed's my brother-in-law, uh, Doak is my sister, but of course he has a different name. Uh, and so I was the only one that would share the name of the senior pastor. And When, when it came time to ordain me, uh, my dad said, Dave, I know you're trained. I know you're wise. I know you have a call of God on your life. I also want you to know but that because of people's immaturity, it will be 10 times as hard for you as it is for anyone else here, simply because people will misjudge you and say, uh, the only reason you're an elder is because you're related to the senior pastor. Of course, that wasn't true, as time has proven, but uh, but th that's sometimes the uh, sinful reaction of human heart. So anyway, uh, thankfully we have the Bible to guide us in these things, but uh, we also have a really great pastoral team, and so we talked about it, prayed about it, everybody felt good about it. And then, of course, uh, we still had to ask Bailey, 
And uh, so I wanted, as his uncle, I didn't want to lean on him. And I don't want to do that to anybody, any of you, by the way. I want to see you fulfill your call of God uh, and, and uh, be at the top of your game and as fruitful as possible. But I never, ever want to feel, uh, for you to feel like uh, uh, we're trying to pressure you to do something that works best for us because it's all about fanning your flames and helping you fulfill the call of God in your life. And so uh, Bailey had connected with Francis Chan, uh, which, frankly, I have always wanted to do and not been able to. Uh, he had connected to, with Francis Chan and, and uh, was thinking about uh, being on a ministry team with him. And I thought, well, what a great opportunity that is. And so um, then I knew, uh, of course, just from being raised around here and being in uh, Paul and Danielle's family, I knew that he knew the rigors of ministry. And sometimes that's like, eh, thanks, but no thanks. That, that can be very intense. And so I thought, well, if it's God, uh, we'll talk to him, see what happens. So we talked to him and just said, hey, uh, this is what happened. Uh, I told him just briefly uh, that uh, Jason and Ari had prayed about it and felt like that he was the best choice. And we talked to the pastoral team and uh, everybody uh, thought that was a good idea and just wanted to submit it to him. So he, he did what I'd expect him to do. He said, well, I'll pray about it. And so uh, anyways, he prayed about it. He felt like God was leading him to come back and help us with the youth. I'm excited about that. And I, I want to share a, a, a couple of uh, dreams here uh, before we end this morning. But before I do all that, I wanted to introduce... Uh, Bailey Bryan, most of you know him. He's a fine young man. He's been trained at the University of the Nations. And the last couple of years, he's been involved in all kinds of different ministries. And he's planning to come back in June and uh, help us with the youth. And I'm excited about it. So, uh, Bailey, come on up. And let's welcome Bailey Bryan. Penumbra. Thank you. Yeah, it's so awesome. Um, when they originally asked me, I right away was so nervous, and, and especially being, you know, my dad being high school pastor and also junior high pastor, just seeing kind of um, the background of ministry and kind of what that entails. And really, I, I think a lot of times, if you have been in ministry, you realize it's not just, especially high school, it's not just making summer camps and having a good time with the kids, but genuinely, it's, it's a very intense job. Um, they don't. They don't tell you in the fine print. You know all the all the 4 a.m. times we have to get up and and go, um, you know, pray for a kid who just OD'd and his parents are there. And um, so it's it's very intense. And I and I right away was like, man, I don't know if I really am prepared for this or ready for this. And um, the more I prayed about it, I just um, I I kept hearing, why are you at this school? Um, and I it was kept you know just getting. Was it because you wanted to be there or because I wanted you there? And I I kept feeling like, well, um, you know, I. I do feel like you called me there, and so I, I heard Second uh, Kings four, which I know a lot of us um, know, but it's when uh, there's a widow and her sons they're going to get kicked out of their house, and Elisha is there, and he says, uh, you know, fill jars with the oil that you have, and she only has one jar of oil, and so she, you know, they get all the jars and they fill it till they fill the last one. As soon as they fill the last one, the the oil runs out, and I I read it and I was really just confused, um, just like what what does this mean? And so praying about it. Um, finally heard heard what it meant and and I felt like God was saying uh during this season it's a time for you to really just press into me and um and just yeah just being a time of prayer and just intercession for the your future and the next season that you're going in and and whatever you um spend time in my presence like however much time is the jars that you're going to bring and, and I'll be able to pour out into you and and fill you up however you let me fill you up and so um just with all that just being super you know excited after that and hearing um you know, right when I kind of just um, said, okay, like, I'm, I'm down, I'll do it, I kept hearing um, unity and um, revival. And so um, I, I was kind of confused for praying about it. And I feel like uh, a lot of times we, we hear revival, and it's such an awesome word that we use and throw around, but really what would it look like to have a, a city that was unified and was genuinely looking at revival for the youth. And so um, just kind of praying into it and getting uh, really excited and talking to um, just friends that I was going to school with there and just feeling like, man, I, I feel like I should, you know, talk to uh, this with some of my friends. Uh, just made really good connects. And so um, 
I, I, there's a couple friends that are here, actually, Isaac and Kalisha, if you guys want to come up. Um, they uh, are with me at YWAM. We have a couple um, uh, other people in YWAM, some skaters that we would love to come out here that are thinking about, you know, going home for a little bit and then coming back and uh, actually doing stuff at the skate park and bringing kids in from the skate park. Um, and so just having, you know, a group come and just kind of... Um, pour out from what we've been poured in from, from being in YWAM and just kind of um, grouping with the group that we already have here because I know we have an awesome leadership team and just kind of, um, yeah, unifying and just unifying this whole city. So if you guys want to just explain kind of what your callings are and what your next step is. Uh, hey guys, I'm Isaac and this is my amazing wife, Kalisha. Um, we really have a passion for fitness um, and CrossFit, and so we're actually coaches uh, in Hawaii right now uh, and coaching CrossFit classes, um, but we're also using fitness for more than just, um, you know, looking good or whatever because that's not the end goal, and so we actually get fit so we can take Bibles into places where um, cars and motorcycles or whatever can't reach villages, um, and we really love how taking CrossFit and like breaking your bodies down in a group aspect and not just like, you know, going to the gym and putting your headphones on and being by yourself. Um, but CrossFit has an amazing way of really making suffering different. Um, and it doesn't sound that fun, but um, we're really taking that aspect and making it a family and a unity um, way. Uh, and it's really beautiful to see um, and we really have a passion and desire for that. So. And so the, the gym we're a part of is with YWAM, and it's called Respect the Corners. Um, and the, the corners that they have are faith, family, extravagant love, and integrity. And basically the heart of it is like if we as coaches and as people can walk out those traits, people will see Jesus. Um, and also the influence that coaches have in people's lives as a voice um, and a way for discipleship. Um, and like Isaac said, for suffering, when you do a hard workout, it really sucks. Um, and stuff tends to come up. Like if you have anger, that's going to come up when you can't do something in a workout. Um, and it just, it helps things to come up. And then there's opportunities to disciple and encourage and pray. Um, and also something else that's amazing about it is it really connects the church to the lost. Because people in the church need fitness. People in the world need fitness because we're... A temple of God, like our bodies, we were meant to steward. Um, and so our heart is really just to carry that heart wherever we go. Um, and so we just want to invite you guys to pray with us, if that would be here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's exciting to me. Um, so I want to say a couple of things. Um, First of all, we've partnered with YWAM. YWAM for years has been, which stands for Youth with a Mission. I think most of you know that. But anyway, uh, when I travel, probably uh, at least 80% of the time, I'm traveling in, in YWAM circles uh, doing discipleship training schools or uh, schools of the supernatural like I just did in Mendocino or schools of prayer and intercession like I just did at Richardson Springs. Uh, I have a, a school in a couple of weeks, uh, again, back in Kona for uh, young families and uh, generally teaching them uh, spiritual warfare deliverance and everything that has to do with the kingdom age, the transition into the kingdom age. But uh, we made a decision a long time ago that YWAM is a very good value. Uh, YWAM has over 4 million YWAMers throughout the world. It's Frankly, it's pretty hard to go anywhere that YWAM isn't already there. And uh, so, as you know, we, we uh, support Warren and Rachel there at, uh, in YWAM in leadership. We support Lon and Lori Kuykendall there in YWAM in leadership. We have a number of other people here and there that we support. But, um, but having invested so much into YWAM, uh, I'm excited about the prospect of, you know, the Bible says, cast your bread on the waters and, many, and in many days they will return unto you. And I believe that. And we've sown and sown and sown. And, and how exciting, you know, that uh, Bailey has been trained. Of course, he was trained well by Paul and Danielle. Uh, but he's been trained um, 
in the schools of YWAM is about to come back. I'm really excited the prospect of I Isaac and Kalisha uh, and also uh, some skateboarders coming back uh, or coming here. They're not coming back because they've never been here before. But, but uh, I, I'm excited about a team uh, being put together because we, we're all, always um, about teams. Uh, one of our ministry mottos is none of us is as good as all of us. Uh, frankly, I've been criticized more for, for, um, for not maintaining control according to the great American religious model uh, than anything else. It's like you, you let Paul do too much. You let Bill to do too much. You let Jess do too much. You let, right? Uh, and I've had, I don't know how many people, but people say, if you would just stay there and you do, you know, you do all the preaching. I had one guy say, uh, this is how much money I make. And uh, I promise that I'll tithe every week. If you promise to stay home 50 weeks a year, and preach every weekend. I said, not going to do it. That's not a biblical model. That if I was home 50 weeks, I wouldn't preach all the time. I get tired of hearing myself talk. But anyway, uh, uh, team ministry, you know, God exists as a team. He's eternally communal. Father, Son, Spirit, these three are one. And so we're really into that. And how awesome for Bailey to join uh, the team, Zach and Heather, and different ones that are uh, here and have been serving for a long time. We have some really good, solid people here uh, on the ministry team. Uh, but how awesome to merge, because I feel merged already, glad tidings and YWAM, but how awesome to have a YWAM team come and help us out. And uh, I want us to really pray into that. And, um, you know, I was just thinking... Uh, of Isaac and Kalisha and all they do and working out and um, and uh, how we could fan their flames and they at the same time could help us. And really that, that's what ministry partnerships are. They're win-win things. It's not about somebody uh, building a pyramid for somebody else. You know, that's, that's slavery. That's a pharaoh mindset. Um, mindset, but in the body of Christ, it should be mutually beneficial. Uh, the Bible calls it a lay loan, but I serve you, you serve me, I love you, you love me, I encourage you, you encourage me. It's a mutual thing, and so um, so I'm really hoping they'll come. Uh, I'm not pressuring them, I'm just telling them, don't miss the will of God, this is awesome. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we, we have extended a, a wide open invitation for them, and I do hope that that will happen. I also hope that, uh, that Bailey's other friend, whose name is Eli Elijah, oh my, uh, that Elijah would come and um, help us fulfill a dream that we've had in our heart for a, a lot of years. I remember um, many years ago, uh, my son James, Joshua, Joe, uh, with, uh, with Ian Reimers uh, and Joe Hobbs. They came to me. They were little boys. They came to me. They had $14.97 or something. And just little boys. They said, Dad, would you build us a skate park? There's no good skate parks. And... Uh, we think it'd be really cool if there was a skate park right here at the church. Well, the 1497 didn't cover it. But we talked about what we are doing as a church. Kalisha mentioned it. If we, we have got to have interface with the people for whom Christ died. And we've got to think of creative ways to do it. And so... Um, uh, so, and I had been down to the skate park in town with the boys, and I thought, wow, how wonderful would that be if we had one uh, here and we could use it for ministry. And so a lot of things we've done are sort of like Noah building the ark. You know, he worked on it for 125 years before God brought the animals to fill it. But um, we, we built a, uh, a dance studio before there was a, a tread dance team here. And we built the TLC before we had any people living there in transition. And we, we've done that a lot of times. We, we uh, of course, built and, and planned to use the well for a 24-hour uh, prayer um, venue far before people start coming in to say we'll be a part of that. And we built a skate park. 
and so far we've never had anybody that um, uh, had the, the passion and the grace and the ability to, to make that an evangelistic outreach. But I want us all to pray about this together. Now, while we're praying about that, and, and who knows who else might come, you know, uh, but uh, we, um, we need to just pray into this because God's will is good and perfect and pleasing in every way and for everybody who's a part of it. And so that's what we want. Nothing more, nothing less, just praying into God's will. Now, having said that, uh, I want to talk about a couple of dreams that happened here. And um, the first one uh, happened when, when our youth group was 150 strong. And honestly, a revival that was happening in the church was being motored from the youth group. It, it was phenomenal what God was doing. And um, the, 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 it wasn't just a big gathering of young people. It was young people with a passion for Christ. And, and it was uh, red hot and happening. It, it, it was uh, really exciting. During that time, Jess Parker's wife, who's gone to be with Jesus years ago now, uh, but Peggy was prophetic and she had a dream. And she told us the dream. And it was very sober. But in the dream, it was in this building. And there was that uh, environment of the Holy Spirit and young people uh, just with a passion, and a vision uh, for Christ. And, and it was that um, revival atmosphere. And um, some hearses came in, a line of hearses came in. And out of the first one, uh, a, a young lady figure that was very uh, seductive and and. Uh, evil looking but but with a seductive evil that was alluring and she was dressed in a bridal outfit and she came in and she started uh, seducing uh, the the kids and drawing them like who, who would want to be here Do you, I can I can show you uh, what real fun is and and uh, let's, let's leave this place. And she just started sowing seeds of, of confusion and discord and, and, and seduction away from the things of God. And people began to follow her. And she was going out and putting them in the hearses. And as a hearse would get full, it would pull away and another one would pull up. And, and she was emptying the place. And Peggy, she said, I know it's from God. It was very um, sobering. And we really need to pray because there's going to be a major assault on the youth of this church. Well, there were 150 at the time. And, and of course, there's just a fraction of that now. But uh, a lot of us have been here long enough to, to see that having been fulfilled. And I could uh, just go on with name after name after name of people who, uh, again, were lured away from their passion for Christ. And so... Uh, so we need to be aware of that. And, um, you know, when God gives you a dream like that, you, you never know, is this so that you can somehow figure a way to avoid it or uh, so that you uh, aren't completely disillusioned when it begins to happen and you know, well, God already foresaw this and so we're going to get through it. A lot of the, the uh, things that happen at the end of the age, they are going to happen. Uh, the crucifixion of Christ was going to happen. Peter felt like, oh, uh, when it was revealed to him, he felt like, oh, I got to somehow stop this. And Jesus said, no, this is going to happen. This is the plan. And so uh, sometimes, sometimes we can avoid things and sometimes we can just prepare ourselves to uh, push through an evil day that we know is coming. But uh, f whatever, we, we, we did our best, but the evil day did come. And, and now uh, for... For years now, we've been trying to stand strong in the evil day. And so um, so that has to do with the need for revival. Uh, Bailey, when he was praying about coming, God spoke to him, revival and unity. And uh, we need revival. I want to talk to you for a moment about unity. Uh, because uh, I had a dream that I knew was from the Lord. And uh, during uh, when I had the dream... It was about the Tice family, which most of us know, some of us are related to. And um, the, uh, in the dream, uh, we, we were having a, 
a really great social environment. Uh, people were having fun and talking and there was food and you know, it was like this room was just uh, filled with people having fun. And, uh, and I was just thinking how wonderful it was. And then in the dream, I, the Holy Spirit highlighted to me uh, th these three people that are related, uh, of a father, son, and a grandfather. And uh, so the son was Ben Tice, and the father was Paul Tice, and the grandfather was Clyde. And in the midst of all these people, I suddenly saw those three. And uh, Paul and Mary were just talking to some friends, and Ben was standing over here, and Ben was being enthusiastic, and he was telling a story and laughing, and he kept looking over at Clyde, who was over here. And if you knew Clyde, uh, he's gone to be with Jesus. But before he did, he, he lost his hearing. He was very impaired. And so Clyde, I don't know, Zach, have you ever heard anybody that talk louder than Clyde? I, I don't know if I've ever heard anybody that could talk as loud as Clyde. And so if Clyde was on the campus somewhere and said hello, everybody would hear him. Hello! You know, he just talked loud because uh, that's what he had to do to hear himself. And, and so anyway, Clyde was uh, talking and Ben was trying to tell a story. He was looking over like, really, Grandpa? And finally he said, hey, Grandpa, hold it down a little bit. There are other people trying to talk. And that, that hurt Clyde's feelings. And, and so Clyde said, well, why don't you act your age for a change? And, and so Clyde then responded negatively toward Ben and the tempers flared and, and Paul was sitting here and if you know Paul, Paul's a man of peace and, and he just jumped up and he said, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. He said, Ben, Clyde, you can almost hear Paul saying, now, now Ben, now Clyde, we're family and we love each other and we don't attack each other and we don't criticize each other because we're family and we love each other. And he brought them both together and started praying for God's grace. And I, I woke up and I knew that it was a warning dream that the enemy would try to divide the generations. And some of you here are intercessors and I've talked to you about it and told you about this dream. Some of you haven't heard it before. But uh, it, it really d deeply troubled me and, and it hurt me because it's such a sad, sad thing. That's an ugly thing. You know, uh, the Bible specifically says that revelation is based on unity. It says that the Spirit of God will turn the hearts of fathers to the sons and sons to the fathers. That's what, that's what revival looks like. And uh, without it, without that unity, you'll, you'll never have revival. And there, there have been some struggles here that have brought division and... Um, and uh, there's probably those that are in the Clyde category that wish some people would grow up. And there's probably those in the Ben category that think that Grandpa's talking too loud. But hopefully there's a whole bunch of us in the Paul category that'll just say, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got to love each other. We can't criticize each other. Everybody has strengths and weaknesses, but we're family and we got to love each other. And so uh, I want us to pray into... Uh, both of these, uh, they both have to do with the youth. I don't want you to think that, oh, why are we, you know, talking about this in a, uh, in a weekend service? Isn't it a youth transition? No, it's integral to this entire church family. Uh, we all win together or we all lose together. We all rise together or we all fall together. We are a family. From the very youngest one here that I think was just taken out, uh, to the very oldest one here, we are family and we have to love one another and we have to believe in one another. We have to fan one another's flames. Uh, it's not just love, but it's also acceptance, which means I don't understand why the kids all want their, their pants torn. <laughs> Brookie, come up here for a minute. Brookie, come up here for a minute. Come up here for a minute. This is a, a generational thing. Like, see... Brookie here, who I love, uh, I have always thrown away pants before they look like that. <laughs> but she's just styling them. I and, didn't rip them myself. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so it, 
yeah, there you go. But, the, you know, so what? It, how, is that important in the big picture thing? You know, as long as I'm not trying to get her to wear black 501s and she's not trying to get me to wear um, pants with no knees in them, we can just love each other, <laughs> right? M most, most of the things that uh, people and families and churches and business are divided about are really inconsequential at the end of the day. They're just not important. We need to keep the main thing, the main thing. And so we need love. Love covers a multitude of boo-boos. Uh, the Bible says that. It doesn't use boo-boo. That's my translation. But it used trespasser, which means mistake. And, uh, and also acceptance. Acceptance doesn't try to change everybody to be like you. It just says, okay, she's into that. Um, the <laughs> my, uh, let me use your hat for a minute, Zach. Uh, my son, my oldest son, uh, was in, uh, a, he was in a, a local store, and there was a guy that used to come to this church, and, and frankly, he, he had a pretty serious religious spirit. And my son was wearing his hat like this. And this guy comes up and he says, uh, don't you know how to wear a hat? And James says, yeah, on my head. <laughs> and he says, well, I want you to turn that hat around. He says, really? He says, okay. So he goes like this. <laughs> he says, how's that? Does that make you feel better? <laughs> and the guy called me and said, your son's rebellious. And I, I told him, I said, I, I know my son. I raised him. And, you know, on some of these things, he takes after his mom a little bit. But <laughs> oh, no. uh, I, said, I said, honestly, I think that was a pretty good response because, because it is absolutely none of your business how my son is wearing his hat. Why would you ever try to make anybody wear a hat the way you want a hat to be worn? That is like way out of bounds. And uh, I think maybe that's why they're not in the church anymore. But the point is, honestly, we, you, can't, you can't run a church that way, trying to make everybody dress a certain way, make everybody do a certain something or not do a certain something. Listen, we have the Bible to guide us. And if there's not a verse in the Bible about how to wear your ball cap, then keep it to yourself. Obviously, it is not a factor from God's point of view. Or he would have a, a verse in the Bible about this is how you wear the ball cap. And so, uh, we, we've got to have acceptance. We've got to love each other. And the, the music. And there's so many things. People have different preferences. And um, so, there's uh, love and acceptance and also forgiveness. Because even if we love one another, really try to accept one another, we'll step on each other's toes every once in a while. And when that happens, uh, we've got to forgive. So I want us to really pray together for this transition in the youth group. Uh, I want to pray um, uh, for um, Bailey's uh, joining the team, and, and we're really excited about that. And for those uh, like Isaac and Kalisha and, and uh, uh, Elijah and, and uh, others that God may be bringing in. For those that have been here, like Zach and Heather, for years and was raised in this church, uh, we, we really need to just pray for the blessing of God on the team. We need to pray against this evil uh, spirit that has uh, indeed attacked the youth of the church and taken them out into, uh, some of them into, you know, uh, ruinous lifestyle. But uh, many, many, many of them out of the presence of the Lord. We need to pray against that. And we need to pray for the unity of the Spirit and the bonds of peace. And so uh, I want to ask uh, Bailey and Isaac and Kalisha to come back up. And I want uh, Zach, anybody else from the youth group leadership team that might be here, uh, let's all stand up. And anybody that just wants to be a, a part of this, uh, Paul and Danielle and Cheryl, just come on up here. We, we just want to pray into this. It's really, really important. It's not a secondary thing. Uh, it, we need to pray that God would pour out his spirit again on our youth uh, because there's been a real devastating attack against our youth. 
And I believe that uh, God is, is uh, being faithful and honoring uh, what we've done for years. I, I believe God's going to uh, sow back into this local church a team from YWAM that's going to be a real blessing. And I'm excited about it. So just extend your hand, if you would, toward them, and we're going to pray. Lord Jesus, uh, we thank you that uh, all uh, and all the things that we go through, we, we do thank you that we are not alone. You love us. You help us. And uh, we believe, Lord, that you do uh, direct each step. We plan our way, but you direct each step. Uh, we thank you, Lord, first of all, for Bailey. We thank you for a young man that has studied to show himself approved unto God a worker that doesn't need to be ashamed, able to rightly divide the word of truth. Thank you for the years and the uh, many uh, dollars that he's put in to being trained and uh, the experience that he's had in traveling with, uh, with the uh, worship teams and doing what he's done at the University of the Nations. And, and uh, we just thank you for that, Lord. And thank you that you put in his heart to come back and, and help us and to serve here with the, uh, his, his mom and dad and Uncle Dave and Aunt Cheryl, and, and we just thank you for that. We, we pray your blessing over him in Jesus' name. And uh, Lord, we do thank you for Isaac and for Kalisha. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the vision you put in their heart. Uh, Lord, just, even though we've just met them, we love them, and we pray over them your perfect will. You know the end from the beginning. And Lord Jesus, we just open our hearts to him, but we pray for your will to be done. And, all the details of uh, what they're planning, what they're hoping for in the future, Lord Jesus. And, and uh, so we, we pray for grace. And Lord, your word says that you guide us with your peace. And so we pray for that, Lord Jesus, uh, for you to guide them with your peace and work out all the details, Lord, regarding uh, their future, Lord Jesus, and uh, whether or not for them to come and be a part of this team, Lord. We just bless them and pray for your grace. And we pray for this young man that's not here, uh, Elijah. We pray, Lord, uh, that uh, you would also just bind him to your perfect will. And Lord, you, you know uh, that for many years we've envisioned a, a ministry that reaches out uh, to these people. And what an opportunity, all, all these people coming because we have a skate park and they're, they're people that you love and died for and it's your will that they be uh, converted and share your glory. We just pray for a thriving ministry uh, to be built out of that skate park. And so all these details, Lord, we pray for grace. And Lord, for this church, Lord, would you help us that we would... Uh, that we would uh, experience uh, and live in the unity of the Holy Spirit and the bonds of peace. Lord, wherever there's been attitudes of criticism, like in, uh, like in the dream between uh, Ben and Clyde, we pray for repentance and conversion and a cleansing of those things and a healing of any relational stress fractures. And wherever there's been uh, controlling attitudes and mindsets like Clyde had in the dream, we pray against those that you'd again bring uh, repentance and cleansing and healing of any wounds. We pray, Lord, for the spirit of the great peacemaker that in that dream was uh, portrayed by Paul. We, we pray, Lord, that you would bind us together in cords of love and help us, Lord, to really love one another, help one another, serve one another. And uh, Lord, we, we just pray for a, the revival that your word talks about, that the hearts of the, the fathers and mothers would be turned toward the children, the hearts of the children would be turned toward their fathers and mothers, and that heaven would open and you'd pour out your Holy Spirit over this place again. We ask it in Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake. And God, we just speak over the young people of this congregation in this region, revival. We speak over them that they would be radically abandoned to you, God. God, we ask you what was happening back in the day when there were 150 people radically zealous for you, that that would pale in comparison to what you do in the near future, God. God, we ask you for a Jesus movement as has been prophesied over our young people for years, God, that there would be a, a Jesus movement of people young people that were zealously in love with you, radically in love with you, God. Would you light a fire? And God, would you draw the exact people, God, that would really be catalysts for that to happen, God? We ask you to use these people and this place to shoot 
arrows all around the world, God, that are on fire, full of love for you, and that we would be able to take Bibles into other countries, to, that we would be able to bring your love to the lost and the poor and the needy. And God, I believe you to do every word that you've ever spoken over this place. And God, we just pray together as a group that you would begin to uh, catalyze a group of people that would make that happen, God. God, we thank you that your promises are true and we believe when we stand here and we call in those that have been scattered by the enemy. We call them back home by the authority of heaven and we believe, God, that you are going after every prodigal, everyone that's been scattered and lost by the uh, attack of hell. And we believe, Lord Jesus, that you are up to something exciting and wonderful. And we just say yes to your perfect will. In Jesus' name. Father, we bless your name and we bless the holiness that you are. We thank you because you are majestic and you ride through the heavens. We thank you, Lord, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly, more than we can think, more than we can ask. And right now, in this moment, in this season, we believe it is the time, the time, the time that you have decided that your presence would fall upon the young people, your presence would fall upon the elders, your presence would fall fall upon every person that comes into this congregation and in this region. The prophetic words that have been spoken over this area, we declare them and we decree them to be now, now, now words. And we speak over these young people and we say, let the mighty power of your presence indwell them to such a degree that they will burn, burn, burn for you in your precious name in your precious name we see it we believe it and we know that you are even now setting the stage you are setting the stage hallelujah and we trust you we trust your word we believe we believe we believe and we see it we see it we thank you for it and in your precious name we ask that you would set a blaze everybody's feet that walk into this place that you would set ablaze that the fire of your presence the fire of your presence would burn 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 that we might glow for you let us glow let us glow for you we thank you for it we believe it in your precious name Amen. Amen. I'm seeing a whole new group of young people coming in. They're coming to Christ. There's a whole new group that they're going to come to Christ. And as these babes come in, they're going to be so on fire that it's going to be a fire that's going to spread. And it's going to even affect even the other generations as well because they're going to be so hungry. And there's going to be a mark over, over this youth, over these youth, because they will begin to understand the love of the Father. Many of them will be so deeply, deeply broken. But the love of the Father will be such a mark on this ministry. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Raise up the power of your creation that you created man and woman unique and special and not to be blurred together Thank you, Father, for this couple. Thank you for Bailey. Thank you for what you're doing and that you will transform these generations that are being destroyed by the enemy, that you'll just bring them out of death into life in Jesus' name. I just thought I would share really quickly, um, when we had the young people, I think it was when Zach's crew was there in India with us, um, 
we were talking to Sadhu, and Sadhu prophesied over our young people, and he said, I see wings on your feet. You will go all to all the nations, all so many nations, and it was an amazing prophecy, but uh, it was quite amazing. He said, I see that uh, wings are being attached to your feet. Uh, on the back of your tennis shoes, there's wings, and the thing that was really amazing about that to me <clears throat> was that we had been in a meeting five years earlier, or some years earlier, that he had also said, I see angels attaching wings to the true intercessors. And some years later, three years later in India, I saw a man at the pulpit pro uh, praying. He was just praying. And I said, honey, I need to take a picture of him because what he is doing right now is so from heaven. It's just amazing. And I want to remember the intensity of the prayer that Sylvanus is praying with. And how many of you have seen the picture in the hallway over in the well where there's fiery wings coming off of Sylvanus? Venus. And that is the picture that I took. I took a picture and what showed up on my phone was a man with fiery wings. And I was on the airplane on the way home and I'm looking through deleting junky photos from our India trip and I'm like, oh my goodness, here's Sylvanus, but he has fiery wings. And Dave said, Cheryl, remember Sadhu prophesied that fiery wings would be attached to the true intercessors. Well, what Sadhu prophesied over our youth group would the, that they would have wings on their feet and they would fly all over the world, that the gospel would go around the world through our young people. And so I want you to pray that, that God would uh, bring together a group that would create that prophecy to absolutely be fulfilled because I believe it is the time and I believe that was absolutely word from God. I believe God is going to bring in many, many, many. And when the enemy set his sights on destroying our young people, he is going to be horrified that he ever tried to take out the youth of this place. So I want you to pray with me for that because I believe we're about to see a phenomenal influx. So... All right, so um, let's, let's all pray into this. Uh, here we are in May already, and uh, they're going to be uh, completing this transition in June. Uh, but let's pray for <clears throat> God's will to be done, and also pray for the unity of the Spirit and the bonds of peace. All right, right now let's let them know we love them very much and we're for them. All right, God bless you. Have a great uh, afternoon.